Today we're looking all at exponents. So for the do now, which is a review from last year, I want you to simplify on the left, in the middle, explain what how you are simplifying, and on the right, generalize the rule for any exponent. Pause the video if you have it, and play it once you're done. So for that first one, we are dividing two terms with the same base. And when you're dividing two terms with the same base, you want to subtract their exponents. So that will be x to the x to the ninth minus 3, which simplifies to x to the sixth. And when dividing terms with the same base, you subtract the exponents. And the general rule for generalized would just be x to the a minus b. So we are subtracting the exponents. The second one, when we're multiplying two terms with the same base, you want to add the exponents. So that would be w to the 7 plus 8 which would give you w to the 15th. When multiplying terms with the same base, you add the exponents, much like we just did. And to generalize it, if it's just x to the a times x to the b, you would add the exponents. So it would be x to the a plus b. The third one, check out here. We have exponents are right next to each other, power to a power. That is when you multiply the exponents, so it will be h to the 3 times 4, which would be h to the 12th. And to raise a power to a power, you just want to multiply. The exponents. So that would be x to the a times b, which we can just write a, b. Now when you raise a product to a power, you want to make sure that you raise each factor to that power. So it's m times n to the seventh. So that would be m to the seventh times n to the seventh. So each factor is getting raised to that power. So raise each factor to the power. So generalized, the x to the a, x times y to the a would be x to the a times y to the a. And the last one, similar to the one above, when, we're, when we have a quotient raised to a power, you just want to raise the numerator and raise the denominator to the power. So that would be c to the third over d to the third. So you want to raise the numerator and denominator to the power. And generalized, that would be x to the a over y to the a. So those are our basic laws of exponents. We're going to go into a little bit more in a minute. What should I know by the end of the day? I can simplify any expression that raises a base to the power of zero and explain the rationale behind that. I can simplify any expression with negative exponents and explain the rationale behind that. I can simplify exp ex expressions that raises a base to a rational exponent. So for example, like 1 over 2. I can explain how to simplify expressions that involve raising a base to a rational exponent. So we're going to be doing that all that today. If we, Now we're going to go into the zero exponent, so let's go to the next page. Let's take a look at simplifying a base to an exponent of zero. So for example, 3 to the zero power. We're going to look into that by first simplifying 3 to the second over 3 to the second. So I want you guys to take a couple minutes, 
simplify 3 to the 2nd, divide by 3 to the 2nd using laws of exponents, and then also in part b by writing out the expression out using all of its factors. Pause the video and play it once you're done. So 3 to the 2nd divided by 3 to the 2nd, we are dividing two terms with the same base. So we would subtract their exponents, so that would be 3 to the 2, 3 to the 2 minus 2, which would be 3 to the 0 power. Okay. So this would be 3 to the 0 power. We don't know what anything to the 0 power is yet, but let's look at the equivalent way of solving this, which is by writing out 3 to the 2nd as using all of its factors. So 3 to the 2nd would be 3 times 3. Same thing in the denominator, 3 times 3. Now we can cancel the, a 3 in the numerator with a 3 in the denominator. That becomes 1 and 1. We can do the same thing. That becomes 1 and 1. So on the top, we really get 1 times 1, which is 1. And the bottom, we get 1 times 1, which is 1. So our answer is 1. So if we simplified 3 to the second divided by 3 to the second and got 3 to the 0 power, and we also simplified it a different way and got 1, that means 3 to the 0 power has to be equal to 1. And let's do that with a different base. So let's do that with m to the 6th. I want you guys to pause the video for a couple minutes, complete A and B, and play the video once you're done. We'll do the same thing here, m to the 6th, divide by m to the 6th, we have the same base, so we can subtract the exponents, that would be m to the 6 minus 6, which is going to give us m to the 0 power. Alright, so now let's write it out using all of its factors, so that would be m times, oops, m times m times m times m, we need, we're multiplying 6m's on the top, over, same thing on the bottom, m times m times m times m times m times m. Okay, so now let's cancel, just like we do with the threes. So these m's cancel to 1 and 1, because same thing divided by the same thing is always 1. And we can keep doing that all the way down the row. So we're just left with on the top is 1 times 1 times 1 times 1 times 1 times 1, which is 1. Same thing on the bottom, 1 over 1, which is equal to 1. So for the same reasoning, if m to the 6 divided by m to the 6, we got m to the 0. But we also, if we do it a different way, get 1. That means m to the 0 is equal to 1. Do we see a pattern here for the generalized rule? Any base, any non-zero real number x, if it's raised to the zero power, it's always going to equal 1. And why is that? Why is anything to the zero power going to be equal to 1? Well, if you take a look back at m to the 6 times m to the 6, in order to get a base raised to the zero power, all it is is it means that it has there's two bases in the with well, one base in the numerator, one base in the denominator, and they have the same exponent. So you really just have the same value in the numerator and the same value in the denominator. So whenever you divide anything by itself, it's always equal to one. So that is what is happening here whenever you have anything raised to the zero power. Let's go to the next page and, ch page and check out the negative exponents. So we're going to look at how can I simplify 5 to negative 2 so that it has a positive exponent instead of the negative exponent that it has. In order to do that, we are going to look at 5 to the 4th over 5 to the 6th. So I want you guys to simplify that expression using law of exponents just like we did on the last page, and also by writing it out 
as a expression with all of its factors. So take a couple minutes and do that, pause the video and play it once you're done. So if I want to simplify 5 to the 4th, divide by 5 to the 6th using law of exponents, well, we're dividing with the same base, so we subtract the exponents, so that will be 5 to the 4th minus 6, so we end up getting 5 to the 4 minus 6, which is negative 2. Okay, so we don't know, we do not know what to do with negative exponents yet, so let's try writing it out as a expression with all of its factors, so 5 to the 4th would be 4, 5, so 5 times 5 times 5 times 5 in the numerator. And similarly in the denominator is 5 to the 6, so that'll be 5 times 5 times 5, and this would be 6 5s. <clears throat> and let's cancel what we can on the top and bottom. So the first 5 in each cancel out, the second cancel out the 1 and 1, the third set of 5s, and the fourth set of 5s cancel out. And what we are left with is 1 times 1 times 1 times 1 in the numerator, which is 1, over 1 times 1 times 1 times 1 times 5 times 5. So we're left with 5 times 5, essentially, in the denominator. We can write that as 1 over 25, because that's 5 times 5 is 25. Or think about writing that as... Um, as an exponent in the base, and as an exponent in the denominator, that would be 1 over, how can I write 5 times 5 with an exponent? That would be 1 over 5 squared. So if you look at it, 5 to the negative second is equal to 1 over 5 to the second. And what we are doing there, we are just putting, when it's a negative exponent, you just want to flip the base. So instead of 5, it's 1 over 5, and you put make the exponent positive. So we're going to do, we're going to take a look at how that will look without a base that is a number. Let's look at a base that is an exponent like n. I want you guys to do the same thing here. Simplify using the law of exponents and then simplify it by writing out all of its factors. So we have n to the 10th divided by n to the 14th. If I'm going to simplify this using the law of exponents, we are dividing with the same base, so we would subtract the exponents, so it would be n to the 10th minus 14, which would be n to the negative 4. Okay. So now let's simplify by writing out all of its factors. So n to the 10th would be 10 n's in the numerator. So that would be n, 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 n. And then 14 in the denominator. So. And let's do the same thing as we have been doing. We're going to cancel out in the numerator and the denominator to make it 1 over 1. So the first set of n's, second set of n's, and there are going to be 10 sets of n here that all cancel to 1 over 1. So in the numerator we have 1 times 1 times 10 ones, which would just stay 1. And in the denominator we have it simplifies to n times n times n times n. So we have four leftover n's in the denominator, which we could write then as writing n times n times n in exponential form would be n to the fourth. So n to the negative fourth, which we simplified using law of exponents, is equal to 1 over n to the 4th, which we simplified using factors. So n to the negative 1, negative 4th would equal 1 over n to the 4th. So notice what we're doing. We're taking the base, which in this case is n, 
to the ne and then negative 4 is the exponent. So you take the base, which is n, and you flip it. So it'll be 1 over n to the positive 4th. And then using our law of exponents, we just bring that exponent into the numerator and the denominator. But 1 to the 4th is just 1. So that's how we get 1 over n to the 4th. So to generalize that for any num number non-zero any for any non-zero number if n is a natural number then x to the negative n would be equal to 1 over x to the n. That's it. Let's go to the next page. So let's look at a uh, four expressions that we would simplify using only positive exponents. You never want to leave an answer with a negative exponent. So looking at number one, we have four to the negative first. So my base is really, if you want to think about it like this, my base is really four over one, then the exponents to the negative first. Whenever we have a negative exponent, you want to flip the base, and that makes, that's the rule for making the exponent positive. So we one over four to the first power. Now it's to the positive first, and the first power is just, whatever the base is, so that would just be 1 over 4. Looking at number 2, I have 2 to 2 over 3 to the negative second. So, we want to write that with a positive exponent, but we have a negative one. What am I going to do to make this a positive exponent? We have to flip the base. The base is what? The base is 2 over 3, so we have to flip that. 2 be 3 over 2 and now we can raise it to the positive second so whenever we have a quotient to a power well I guess the direction says simplify the expression using only positive exponents so that would be the correct answer right there you can circle that or you can take it a step further that would be 3 squared over 2 squared which would be 9 over 4 I'd be fine with either either of those answers Number three, negative 10 to the zero power, anything to the zero power is one. That simple. And then 24, what I like to do with questions like 24 is I'm going to simp uh, simplify it or separate it into the, the like terms that I can simplify. So if I look at 24 and 8, so that would be 24 divided by 8 times x to the negative seventh divided by x to the negative eighth. The y would be y to the fifth divided by y to the seventh. And then there's no z on the top, so that'd be one over z to the negative fifth. And I'm gonna go by and I'm gonna simplify each of those and then put it all together. So 24 divided by eight is three. x to the negative seventh my, uh, divided by x to the negative 8th, I'm going to subtract the exponent, so it'll be x to the negative 7th divided by, I uh, subtracted from, sorry, x to the negative 7th, subtract negative 8, keep change, change on that, or distribute the negative, you get x to the first power, which is just x. Do the same thing with y, so that will be y to the 5 minus 7 would be y to the negative second power. And then if I look at 1 over z to the negative fifth, I have a negative exponent. So what am I going to do? I'm going to flip that base. So what that becomes is that z just comes through the numerator, and it'll be positive 5. We're not completely simplified yet because that y is raised to a negative exponent. We have to make that a positive exponent. So how do we do that? We have to flip the base. So the y is in the numerator now. It goes into the denominator. So our fully simplified answer using positive exponents would be 3 times x times z to the fifth over y squared. So I just want you guys to take the next three to five minutes, pause the video, and do one, two, three, and four the checkpoint, and we will go over them. I'll show you the answers once you play the video again. Here are the answers to 1 and 2. So 
So 18 divided by 27 simplifies to 2 over 3. A to the 9th divided by A to the 11th, 9 minus 11 is negative 2. And then negative 7 minus a negative 3. I show the work up there because it's subtracting negatives. That can get tricky. Give you B to the negative 4th. And then the A and the B, because they are raised to a negative exponent, go into the denominator. So that's why it's th 2 over 3A squared B to the 4th. And with 2, you want to just raise each factor inside of the parentheses to the second power, which is what you did. So you're multiplying 2 by the 3, the negative 2, and the 7. And also make sure, this is a key mistake I see here, to raise that 3 to the second power. I see a lot of people forget to raise that coefficient out there to the power. So make sure you raise the 3 to that power. And the last two, a little bit trickier. So for number three, there's a bunch of different ways of going about number three. It's all going to give you the same correct answer. But what I chose to do is I first chose to flip everything first. So I flipped the entire the entire base to deal with that negative exponent. And then I simplified each each like term inside of the uh, quotient and you get 1 over 5 times b to the negative 7th times c to the negative 1st but they have a negative exponent so you have to flip them they're in the numerator that they put, put in, the, in the denominator and then you raise the numerator and the denominator to the third power and 4 take a look at number 4 the beginning part is very similar to number two. You have to raise each power, each uh, factor to the negative third power. And same thing with one fourth to d to the negative second. You have to raise each factor to the negative second power and simplify from there. All right, let's go to the next page. We have another do now. So I want you guys to take one to two minutes. Don't take any more than one to two minutes. Pause the video and do one through four and play it once you're done or after two minutes. Looking at number one, two to the third means we're multiplying two. We have three twos we're multiplying, so two times two times two, which would be four times two, which is eight. Looking at number two, 14 squared would be 14 times 14. I'm going to write it out vertically like back in the old days so four times four is six carry the one five placeholder one times four is four one times one is one and we get 196 three to the one half if you haven't seen rational exponents yet this should stump you so we're going to go over three right now and then four we're going to go over at the end of the page but 3, 9 to the 1 half, what's different about this? We're so used to seeing the base, like 9, being raised to a natural number or an, or an integer. So like 9 to the 3, if it's raised to like a natural number, that would be 9 times 9 times 9. Or we've just done 9 to like an integer, like 9 to the negative second. You would flip the base, so 1 over 9 to the second power. But this has a number in the denominator of our exponent. So this is a little bit different. What this is going to simplify to, and we'll explain it a little bit more in a second, would be that denom denominator is the it's called the index of our radical. So it would be the second root of 9 but we don't say second root that's just the square root so just write this would be the square root of 9 which is 3 now you're probably saying to yourself how how did you know to do that why does it make any sense let's take a look at some math so what does we're looking down here now what does radical 5 squared equal to well 
Radical 5 squared would be radical 5 times radical 5. And remember when we multiply square roots, we multiply what's on the inside, the radicand. So that'd be radical 5 times 5, which is 25, which is 5. So we can say radical 5 squared is equal to 5. All right. Now let's go over here. And let's do 5 to the 1 half squared. So here I have power to power, so I know I can multiply my exponents. So it'll be 5 to the 1 half times 2, which would be 5 to the first, because 1 half times 2 is 1. And 5 to the first is 1. So I know 5 to the 1 half squared is equal to 5. Makes sense. Okay. So then, what does this tell us about radical 5 and 5 to the 1 half if you square both of them and you get the same number? Think about that for a minute. What is that telling us? If you square them and you get the same number, well, that means that radical 5 has to equal 5 to the 1 half. So, that just means whenever you raise something to the 1 half, whenever you, ra whenever you raise any base to the 1 half, it's just the square root of that base. So, if I were to do x to the 1 half, that is just equal to the square root of x. And that is why also when you look at 9 to the 1 half, that's the same thing as the square root of 9, which is 3. So let's look at, if it's not to the 1 half, let's look at if it's to the 1 third. So we have the cube root of 8 to the third. We can do this one of two ways. We can say, okay, I know the cube root of 8 to the third that cancels out the cube root and the third, because those are inverse operations. And I know that that would just equal 8. Or, you can write it out as the cube root of 8 times the cube root of 8 times the cube root of 8. And then since we all have cube roots, we can multiply the radicands together as they are like terms, and we get the cube root of 512, which is 8. And let's go over to the right, and we'll do the 8 to the 1 third times 3. So 8 to the 1 third times 3, power to a power. We want to multiply those exponents. So 1 third times 3. And 1 third times 3 is 1, so we have 8 to the first power, which is equal to 8. So here we get 8 to the 1 third to the third is equal to 8. And our first one we did down here was the cube root of 8 to the third third is equal to 8. So if we cube root, if we cube something and we get the same thing, 8 and 8, we can say that the cube root of 8 is equal to 8 to the 1 third. So notice how that denominator on our exponent is now the index it's called on our radical. And now let's take a look at that last one because this is going to lead into what we're going to do on the next page. We have 4 to the 3 over 2. So we know that 2 in the denominator is going to make it be the square root of 4. So it's going to be the square root of 4, 
But then we have that three in the numerator. The numerator is nothing new to us. The numerator, that's where the exponent here was just three or three over one. The exponent for two is just two or two over one. So that numerator is nothing new. That's just our power. So that would be the square root of four to the third power. So you want to do the easiest way of going about this is I want to do square root of four times square root of four times square root of four. I would first just do a square root of four to simplify it first. So the square root of four is two. So this would be two to the third power, which is eight. And that's a lead into what we're about to do on the next page. When we have rational exponents, so for any rational exponent, m over n, or m and n are integers, and n has to be greater than or equal to 2, then a to the m over n is equivalent to, notice that n, the denominator, is now the, if we want to simplify into radical form, the denominator number is now the index, or the number on the radical, and the numerator, nothing new with the numerator, that's what we have been doing, um, you know, since elementary school or middle school, um, that numerator is just what we raise our base to the power of. You can also write it as, so our power, the m, could go on the outside, and then you could do the radical first. You could deal with the radical first. It's both the same thing. You could do the radical first and then raise it to the power, or you can raise it to the power of m and then do the radical. I think it's easier to do this way first if you're doing it by hand, because it's easier to get the smaller number first to get the radical of the number and then raise it to the power. So you're not, for example, if we had um, let's do 16 to the 5 over 2. That We can rewrite that as the square root of 16 to the 5th. Or we can write it as the square root of 16 to the 5th. This one you would have to first do 16 times 16 times 16 times 16, right out of space, so I gotta go over here, times 16, and then square root it. That's gonna take a lot of time to multiply those 16s together, especially if you're doing it by hand. Um, here, for the first one, we can just do the square root of 16, which is four to the fifth, and then you would do four times four times four times four times four, which would stay, save a decent amount of time. So I always recommend doing the radical first. So let's look at number one. Explain how 27 to the 4 over 3 can be evaluated using properties of rational exponents to result in an integer answer. So we want to first write this in radical form. So we're going to write this in radical form where our numerator is our power on the base and our denominator is the power or the index on our radical. So we can rewrite it as either the cube root of 27 to the fourth, or we can do 27 to the fourth inside of the cube root. But I recommend, that's why I highlighted it, the cube root of 27 to the fourth, because you could do the cube root of 27 first so what times what times what gives you 27? That would be 3. And then you can do 3 to the 4th, which is 81. So I recommend doing that either way. You would get the same thing. You could go ahead, do 27 to the 4th, and then cube root it. Um, but that's a lot more work, especially if you don't have a calculator. I also want to show you guys how to put that in the calculator. So you can do this multiple ways. It was 27, so 27 is our base. You can raise it, and then you can put alpha y equals to get the fraction, 4 over 3. You'll see, oh, say, 81. 
you could also do, say, you don't have the, um, can't think of the exponent to the 4 over 3, if you can't think of how to do that, then you can always press math, and then choice 4 is cube root, so you could press 4, so it will be the cube root of 27 to the 4th, we'll get 81, or you could do it the other way, you can do the cube root of 27 to the 4th, so that 4th, oops, it, staying inside that cube root, and you'll see we will get 81, so it's all the same, it's all equivalent ways of finding the uh, solution. And the next question dealing with rational exponents, it says explain how 8 to the 1 7th to the 2nd can be written as the equivalent radical expression, the 7th root of 64. So I'm going to do a little bit of work here um, before I start writing stuff. So 8 to the 1 7th to the 2nd, and I'm trying to get it to be the 7th root of 64. Well, I have a power to a power here, so I know I can multiply that ex those exponents. So it'll be 8 to the 1 7th times 2, or you can think of it as 2 over 1. That would give you 8 to the 2 over 7. Okay, so I, the base inside of the radical 64, it's not 8. So I know we're going to be squaring the 8 first for this. So I'm going to rewrite that as the 7th root because 7's our denominator on our exponent, so it's our index on our radical. And then 8 squared goes on the inside. Okay, so now let's just square 8, so that would be 7th root of 64. And that's how we are going to convert it. But it says explain, so we have to put words to that. So what do we do first? We first multiplied the exponents to obtain 8 to the 2 7th. And then you want to rewrite 8 to the 2 7th in radical form so that it'd be 8 squared on the inside of the 7th root. 8 squared is 64. And therefore, we have the equivalent expression, the 7th root of 64. So let's practice using rational exponents Feel free if you guys want to pause the video and do these four questions and then uh, play it and check the answers, go right ahead, or you can follow along with us. So, 3a, we, got, we want to write each in simplest radical form, then completely simplify without a calculator. So, 64 to the 1 third, the 3 is in the denominator, so that's going to be my index on the radical, so it'll be the cube root. And our base is 64. We can write 64 to the one to the first power if you want to, but that's just 64. So I'm just going to leave it as a cube root of 64, which is what times what times what, where it's all the same is equal to 64. Well, that's going to be 4 times 4 times 4. So the cube root of 64 is 4. And let's look at B. B is 625 to the 1 fourth power, so I know my, it's going to be radical, but my index is going to be 4, because that's the denominator on my exponent of 625. What times what times what times what gives me 625 when it's all the same number? That would be 5. Let's look at C. C is negative. So the base is negative here, 8 to the 2 over 3. So my 3 is in the denominator of my exponent, so that would be the cube root of, make sure you keep negative 8 in parentheses, of negative 8. Now you could square negative 8 on the inside. I'm going to choose to square everything at the end. So the cube root of negative 8 would be negative 2 times negative 2 times negative 2. Yep, be negative 2. And negative 2, make sure you keep it in parentheses, then gets squared. So negative 2 times negative 2 is 4. And the last one, D, 
ooh, what's a little bit different about D than what we have been doing? Well, it is rational exponent, but it's also negative, so we have to deal with the negative first. So instead of, we can think of it as 36 over 1 to the negative 1 over 2, if that's easier to think about, think of for you. So we first need to flip the base to make that a positive exponent, so now be 1 over 36. And now it's positive to the 1 over 2. And now since it's to the 1 over 2, that is our radical 1 over 36. And you can, you might see the answer right now, but you could also just extend the radical to the numerator, extend it to the denominator. Radical 1 is 1. Radical 36 is 6. So our answer is just 1 over 6. So rational exponents are going to combine with negative exponents. You just have to remember to flip the base. And that is it for today. This I highly recommend doing the success criteria, the classwork, and there is also homework.